Hi there, Internet. Welcome back. We're going to continue work on our flat shader. Uh, there's a bunch of naming stuff we need to do still that I didn't really fix up in the last video. And then I also want to add a border around what we currently have. Um, so if we jump in, this is what we have currently. This is picking up from the last video. We've got our cutoff that adjusts this. Uh, we've got our mask and we've got our color. So we can make it, let's make it blue. Yeah, I'm feeling blue this video. There we go. So I've made a few extra masks just so we can kind of see what our shader is currently capable of. We've got the really simple dot. So we can make a dot of any size or no size at all. Uh, or we can just make it a square if it goes all the way up. And that's just because of the black around the corners. Um, but let's go back there. We've also got the exact opposite of a dot. So we've got a little cut out circle in the middle. Um, in the last one, this one's pretty interesting. If you've played like League of Legends, you've got the cooldown timers or something. And that's more or less what this does. Just counts in a little big sweep. Um, so there's a lot you can do with what we currently have. But it really is just kind of a glorified um, cutout shader. And frankly, Unity already does that. So why would we write our own? So let's make it a little bit better. But first, uh, let's jump back in here and make all of our names a little bit less terrible. Um, so we're still using a lot of the custom or the, the pre-generated Unity names. We've still got our main texture. We've still got our color. We've still got our custom flat shader, which is the location it's going to end up in in your file system. Uh, we don't really want to use any of this. We've even got our metallic and glossiness settings still in there. So let's pull these out. These definitely don't need to be here. Um, next, let's take this. Let's create a whole flat shader um, group, I guess. So we'll create a folder. This will show up in under your materials when you're selecting what shader to apply to a material. This is how you'll navigate to it. So it'll be under flat and we'll just call it the simple for now. So we've got our simple flat shader. Um, next, let's mess around with our main texture. Let's make it um, our foreground mask. So what we want is we want to take our foreground mask and we're actually going to have to replace everything that references it with that name. Um, there's also, if you noticed in this input, this UV foreground mask. Um, Let's make just make sure I got everything quick. I believe I got all the references to it. So if we jump back to Unity, you'll notice it's got this tiling and this offset um, set up. That's controlled by the UVs. Um, so UVs are just a scale of between 0 and 1 and kind of map how the texture is mapped to your object. It maps uh, those coordinates to your vertices in your object. So each of these uh, corners in our square are each going to have a UV coordinate. So we can drop this circle in here. And the reason this works is because our UV coordinates are 0, 0, 1, 0, uh, 0, 1, and 1, 1. And so that way, our image kind of gets stretched between all of them. Um, but you can actually, we can like mess around with these if we want. Um, we don't, we're not really going to be worrying about UVs, but uh, we do still need them to be calculated. Otherwise, they're not going to we're not going to be able to map our image correctly. So that's why that's there. Um, so that should be everything for the foreground mask. You saw it was working. It was just working. Um, other things, let's change this color to be our foreground color. And we can just go up here, change that and that. And so now we have a foreground color. Um, Let's also rename these to our foreground color and foreground mask. And that's just how they're going to show up in Unity. And then we'll also change this to our foreground cutoff. So everything, this is, these are only going to affect our foreground. Um, the reason we're doing this, obviously, we're changing everything to be, uh, we're going to add a background. So we don't really want to have all of our references being to the same object. I mean, that, that could be handy, 
but there's going to be some advantages that we can pull from using different things. So that's what we're trying to accomplish here. So we'll replace that cutoff and this one, and we should be good. So that should cover everything. So the shader should function exactly the same way. We've just changed some of the names around. So it's a little bit easier to understand what's going on. And if we jump over here, we'll notice that some of our values got reset. And that's just because we changed their names and Unity can't bind them anymore. So let's jump back to our blue-ish color. A little different blue than before, but you get the idea. Um, now we've got fancy shader. Well, I say fancy. It's not really fancy, but we, you get the idea. So next up, we want to actually pull a background in. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to copy. Oh, uh, let's just take the cutoff for now. And so we're going to take our background cutoff. And we're going to rename it, obviously, to background cutoff. It's going to have the same setup as our foreground cutoff. It's just going to be a background. And then we want to have this clip is actually going to cut off based on the background. And so this shader is only going to work if our background is greater than, uh, yeah, is let well is less than our um, foreground. Otherwise, you won't see a background. It will just look weird. But uh, that should be everything we need. So we can actually jump back here and actually get our background working. And you'll see the background actually controls the cutoff, and our foreground isn't actually doing our foreground cutout cutoff is not doing anything anymore. Um, and the reason that is, is because, well, this clip is now using the background. We're not actually even referencing this foreground cutoff at all. <clears throat> so if we jump back here, what we want to do is we want to change this albedo color. We want to change the emission between the foreground color and the background color. If the cutoff or if the point we're at is greater than the foreground cutoff. So if we're, if we're above the foreground cutoff, we want to render this foreground color. Otherwise, we want to render the background color. And so we can actually, just like a normal um, anything else, you should be able to just throw an if statement in here. This isn't probably the best way to do this. Um, usually, if statements are any, any sort of like jumping in shaders is usually frowned upon. Usually, you can do some fancy math to get this to work, but we're just going to throw in a if statement to kind of get the point across, prove out the concept, and then we can uh, refactor and make it better over time. So let's check if this cutoff.r is greater than our foreground cutoff. And if it is, then we want to render our foreground color equals the foreground oops sorry and then what we can actually do here is do a float three of zero 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 and this should be black so it's just creating a rgb or a float with three values in it of all zero which is just going to be rgb all equal to zero and so that should set our background color is just going to default to black. So we don't have a back a background color up here yet. So we're just going to do this quick. And we should be able to see a black come in. So there we go. We've kind of got an outline showing up. And that's exactly what we want. We want to be able to draw an outline. And then as we shrink our foreground color and it nears and passes the background, the background kind of goes away. And so if we actually bring this below the background, you'll see there isn't one. But if we bring it above, eventually it turns into an entirely background and we can kind of fade between them. So that's sort of what we're going for. Well, it is what we're going for, but it's what we've got. So now we want to actually be able to color that. So let's pull out this foreground color, call it the background color, background color. There we go. Um, let's set the default to be black believe it's RGBA. I could be wrong here, and this value could not be the alpha, but I believe it is, so that's what we're going to leave it as. 
Um, then all we have to do is change this float3 to be the background color. And we should be good. The only other thing we need to do is switch this foreground, well, is to make a background color that's actually passed into the shader. Remember from last time that this is only specifying in Unity the values that need to be passed in. This is where the values are actually stored. So if you need, if you don't have this, no, the shader's not going to know what this is. So we need to specify that here, and then Unity will figure will discover it here and be able to pass it in. So that's sort of how that pipeline works. But now if we jump back here, you can see our black seemed to have worked. So I guess I was right with those color guesses. And now we can change it to something fun, like green. This is looking terrible. Hopefully you guys are more artistic than I am. But you get the idea. We've got our fun little outlined shader. And you can kind of adjust it how, however you want and pull it about and do whatever. Um, if we slap a different material on there, we'll get something else. This actually looks very, fairly interesting. You kind of get it like a two-tone thing if you do this. But we can, yeah, work with this. So in the next video, I think we'll get to uh, some animation and we'll actually make this pop a little bit more. This has been fairly simple so far. But we'll also, yeah, we'll dive into some animations and do some more fun stuff. So hope to see you guys in the next video. If you like what I'm doing, uh, feel free to subscribe down below um, and leave your comments. I'd like to see what you're, see what you're thinking and if you have any ideas for where this can go. So thanks for watching. Bye.